This video is about auxiliary axioms for expected utility theory. Beyond completeness, transitivity, continuity, and independence, economists often adopt other axioms. These are not required for expected utility theory, but make analysis more practicable. These include reference point of zero wealth, non-satiation, monotonicity, convexity, and diminishing marginal utility. I will now provide further detail on these. Reference point of zero wealth. When people are considering whether to accept or gamble or compare options, they do not decide from a blank slate. They come with an existing set of resources, wealth, and that wealth may affect their decision. A gamble may be more attractive if someone has more or less wealth. This necessitates the setting of a reference point from which utility is calculated. In expected utility theory, that reference point is typically considered to be zero wealth. The way this is implemented is we typically calculate utility over total wealth. For example, if offered a gamble where they could win or lose $10, we do not calculate the utility of each option as U of $10 and U of minus $10. Rather, the utility of each option is calculated as U of W plus $10 and U of W minus $10. The practical impact of this implementation is that people's choices may differ depending on their wealth. The same gamble may be accepted or rejected at different levels of wealth. Non-satiation the idea behind non-satiation is that no matter what you have, there is always another, nearby bundle that you would rather have. There is no maximum level of utility that you can achieve. Whatever your utility now, you can always increase it. In this diagram, I have plotted an indifference curve. Point X is on the curve. For non-satiation, there will always be a point such as Y that is strictly preferred to X. Monotonicity. Preferences are monotone if more of any good in the bundle makes the agent strictly better off. Non-satiation is implied by monotonicity, but not the other way around. Monotonicity implies downward sloping indifference curves. This is because any increase of a good in your bundle would take you to a higher indifference curve. A horizontal indifference curve is not feasible as moving along that indifference curve implies more of the good, but that is not possible as monotonicity implies you are better off and hence on a higher indifference curve. This can be seen in this diagram. Point X lies on the indifference curve. Increasing the amount of either good will take you to a higher indifference curve. That is true for all points on that indifference curve. Convexity. Convexity means that people have a preference for variety or combination. Indifference curves bulge toward the origin. Averages are better than extremes. In many contexts, this makes sense. For example, suppose you are indifferent between two beers and two meat pies. Under this assumption, any mix of the two, such as a beer and a pie, will be at least as preferred as the two beers or two pies. Formally, a preference relation is convex if, for any x preferred to y and for every theta between 0 and 1, theta times x plus 1 minus theta times y is preferred to y. This definition is illustrated in this diagram. The curve represents an indifference curve for different combinations of two goods. There are two bundles, x and y. In this case, x is weakly preferred to y as x is at least as good as y. Any weighted combination of x and y, which would be on the line between the two, can be seen to be strictly preferred to either x or y as it would be on a higher indifference curve, a curve further from the origin. One point to note from this diagram is that if the indifference curve were a straight line, any point on a line between x and y would also be on that line and weakly preferred to x and y. This would still be a convex curve. This contrasts with strict convexity. Strict convexity is where, for any x at least as good as y, where x does not equal y, and for every theta between 0 and 1, theta times x, 
plus 1 minus theta times y is weakly preferred to y, and theta times x plus 1 minus theta times y is weakly preferred to x. For two equivalent goods or bundles, a weighted average of the two bundles is better than each of those bundles. Diminishing marginal utility. Suppose you want some chocolate. You eat a piece. You then eat another. And another. How much utility do you imagine getting from the first piece compared to the 100th piece? The first piece will likely be much more satisfying than the 100th. This is the idea of diminishing marginal utility. Marginal utility is how much utility you get or lose from an incremental decrease or increase in consumption. Under diminishing marginal utility, each successive additional unit of consumption delivers a smaller, diminishing amount of utility than the last. This concept is illustrated in this diagram. The curve represents an indifference curve for the good x. The curve is concave, which means that the slope of the curve decreases in x and the marginal utility of each additional unit of good x decreases as you consume more of it. One additional unit of good x when the agent has a units of the good leads to a much larger increase in utility than one additional unit when the agent has b units of the good. Diminishing marginal utility leads to risk-averse preferences. Someone is risk-averse if they strictly prefer the expected value of a gamble to the gamble itself. Diminishing marginal utility is related to the axiom of convexity. Diminishing marginal utility will lead to convex indifference curves. However, the reverse relationship does not always hold.